Good afternoon, my friends. I hope all of you are having an awesome, fantastic day. And hello from International Drive Orlando. It has been quite some time since I've last been here. And I have to say, and it kind of hurts me to say this, I drive has not been the same. It's actually been going downhill pretty dang quick ever since the pandemic and when tourism was allowed to operate again because that's what International Drive is. It's for tourism here in Central Florida and it just hasn't been the same and it's quite sad. And if you guys don't know what International Drive Orlando is, it's an area here in Central Florida that's located just about dead center in between Disney World and Universal Studios. You can find two outlet malls with a ton of shopping, restaurants, dinner shows, small attractions, and of course, hotels. And honestly, I feel like the hotels have solely been keeping iDrive afloat lately because there's a ton of hotels throughout the street here. And then you have the Orange County Convention Center where I am right now. So today I figured I would just take you down the street, well, the main street of International Drive to see what's exactly going on, see what's still in operation, see what's new, see what's changed, and just kind of have a better understanding to what's going on here on International Drive. It's going to be fun. I hope you guys are ready because I am. Let's go do this. All right, and here we are. I do want to quickly mention it is kind of windy outside today, so we're just going to make do. But right in front of me, you have the Hilton Orlando, which is a fantastic Hilton. I have stayed here before. I've done a full detailed video if you're interested. I'll be sure to leave it down in the description below. It's also connected to the Orange County Convention Center, which is right behind the hotel. And then right here, you have one of the few parking garages for the Orange County Convention Center. And then right behind me, you have the 528 toll road, which will get you over to the Orlando International Airport. Or if you're taking a cruise, this will lead you down to Port Canaveral. And then you have SeaWorld Orlando and Aquatica right back over here. And if you continue going this way, this will lead you down to the Vineland Outlet Mall that's closest to Disney World. It's crazy how fast time has been flying by here lately because the last time I was in this parking area was back in 2020 when COVID was first announced. It was still being discovered and this parking area was actually a temporary COVID testing site here at the Orange County Convention Center with this parking garage. And I remember coming here with Bianca and family members all the time to get tested because this was one of the biggest testing sites and they always had a ton of spots available. And I just remember waiting in line. I mean, the line was probably an hour and a half long of just trying to get in to get tested. Oh man. What a time that was. Check out this view of Epic Universe. That's one of the new hotels that's currently being built. And then that's Epic Universe, Universal's newest theme park. We can see a lot of coaster track, lots of cranes and structures being built. Let me see if I can zoom in just a little bit more. Oh yeah, look at that. There's the dueling coaster right there. I found a different angle of Epic Universe and I'm seeing even more coaster track. Yeah, lots of activity. Also back here, you can find Top Golf. It's not exactly on International Drive. It's a little off here on Universal Boulevard, but it's back here. I have walked across the street. There's the Hilton Orlando where I was just at. I'm starting on the east side of International Drive, at least that's what my Apple Watch is telling me. And then across the street here, that's the front of the Orange County Convention Center, and that is the South Concourse. And then you can find a Red Lobster, a McDonald's, a Dunkin' Donuts, and a Denny's right here across from the Orange County Convention Center. Ooh, you can find these Newt scooters that you can rent via the app along International Drive. It just says rent me. And then you scan this QR code, pay for it, and you can take it along iDrive here. Something fun to do. You can also find the Rosen Hotel, which is another good hotel in this general area. And then you can also find a Walgreens. Something else that you can find along iDrive is of course the iRide trolley system. This is a very affordable 
form of transportation if you don't have a vehicle here on your vacation. I have done a full detailed video on this. If you wanna check it out, I'll also leave it down in the description below. But you can take it all the way from like Fun Spot America, Desertland, the other outlet mall, and then you have Icon Park, Ripley's, The Point Orlando, and it will take you all the way down to Aquatica, SeaWorld, and the Vineland outlet mall. Very nice. I love that they still have this here. If you were interested on the pricing, here you are. Like I said, it's very affordable. And then you can also purchase the unlimited ride passes from a day to upwards to 14 days. And then if you're interested, just scan this QR code. I'm back in the car now. My next destination is over at Point Orlando, but I wanted to show you another good hotel option. You have the Hyatt right here that is also connected to the Orange County Convention Center. Okay, I have arrived here at the Point. By the way, here's a better look at the Hyatt. It is a massive hotel. And then across the street here, you can find the Rosen Plaza. Parking here was $5 for two hours. But if you're interested in valet, here's a little bit more information on the valet, $14. And then I wanted to point out, you can find the Capitol Grill right over here. I've never been here, but I've heard great things about this restaurant. And then here's the Pub Orlando, another great place. There's a ton of different restaurants down here. Looks like main event is still open and going. There's a taco and tequila spot. And then you can find the Hampton Social, which is a great restaurant. It does seem like recently the point underwent some renovations because all of this is new. You have some seating areas. It's more colorful and bright and open, it feels like. I don't think this screen was here. I think that screen is new. Oh yeah, sign me up. VIP bottle service this way. I'm passing by the Cuba Libre and I wanted to show you a quick look at their menu. Ooh, sounds good. It's a little pricey, but again, this is a tourist area. And then they have a late night bites menu. And now I'm back here at the pub Orlando and here's a look at their menu. They have a brunch menu on Saturday and Sunday chicken and waffles hold the hangover bowl i may have to come back and check this out chicken and biscuits here's some shareables Ooh, they have a scotch egg soup and greens the royal couple and then some hamburgers and of course fish and chips i totally forgot about this restaurant called the ocean air it's a seafood room and here's their menu they have a raw bar, oysters, what else? Shrimp, salmon, calamari, soups and salads, lobster bisque. They have some chef's specialties, crab claws, swordfish, yum. And then you can find some steaks. Yeah, I may have to come back and check this restaurant out as well. There's some good restaurants down here still. I'm not seeing a menu outside of the Capitol Grill, but believe me, if you want a good steak, if you want some good seafood in a good atmosphere, this is the place to be. They have a sign up saying, celebrate Mother's Day with us. It's just crazy seeing so many restaurants and shops closed because I would come here a good amount, not all of the time, but I do know the point Orlando started to slightly go downhill when Icon Park opened a few years back and there's just a lot of restaurants closed. Looks like this taco and tequila spot is not open just yet. But I will say, if you are into happy hour, come down here to International Drive, more specifically to the Point and Icon Park because just about all of these restaurants are open during the day. Blue Martini is a very fun spot. Myself and Bianca, we have been here a few times. And here's a better look at the happy hour menu here. And then if you need something to do on like a Friday or Saturday night, Blue Martini is usually the spot to be. Like I said, I haven't been here in a very long time, so I don't know what the crowd level is like, but when I used to come here, Blue Martini was a nice spot to come to during the evening time. I forgot what this restaurant used to be, but it's just about completely gutted. They still have the old TV wall mounts 
still up out on the patio and some string lights and some fans. Looks like nothing is going to take over, but for now, it's just sitting empty. This is a new spot, at least to my knowledge, called JoJo's Shake Bar. Let's go have a closer look at the menu here. This looks fun though. Look at the outside patio. Oh my goodness, this cocktail menu looks awesome. They have a cotton candy martini. They have some sandwiches, a smash burger, fish and chips, soup, salads, snacks, buffalo wings. They have a brunch menu. And of course, you can't forget about the shakes. This Girl Scout shake is kind of calling my name. Yeah, there's just not a lot going on here at the Point Orlando anymore. I feel like this little area is newish called The Link. I don't know what The Link is, but main event, there's a escape room and then Monkey Joe's over here. Let's walk through it real quick. This is very nice, but it seems like not a lot is going on right now other than empty stores. And this is the other side of The Link. It will lead you right to main event. We like coming out here to main event Quite often, Adri really likes playing the arcade games here. They have bowling, they have some decent food and such. Other than that, <laughs> I'm not really seeing anything. I'm still here right by main event. They have a outdoor bar here. So if you want a drink to go, this would make for a good place to stop. But right across you have the escape room, Will to Escape. I've never heard of this escape room. It looks fun though. They're hiring. If you continue walking back in this direction, it will just lead you back to the pub Orlando. So yeah, again, there's nothing really going on. Let's head this way and then head upstairs. They do have elevators to take you upstairs if you need the extra assistance. They have you covered. I'm now on the other side of main event. And the only thing that's down here worth noting is Monkey Joe's and then you have restrooms and that's the parking garage that I parked my car in. This is pretty sad. I remember the first time I came here to Point Orlando. I mean, this place was popping. There was so many people here, so many stores, so many restaurants. And you know, I know it's during the day right now. It's not on a weekend, but still, it's crazy to see. Just got off the escalator here. And the only thing worth noting up here is the Regal Cinema because it has a 4DX movie theater. And if you don't know what a 4DX movie theater is, you're watching the movie while sitting in a seat that will move with the movie. And there's different effects like water effects and such. It's pretty cool. And then they have a IMAX theater as well. There's the front of main event. It looks like BB King's is still open. It's a blues club. I've been here before. Happy hour is currently going on. Oh, maybe it's not open. I don't think it's open. Oh no. Let's have a peek through the window here. If we can see anything. Oh yeah, it's empty. Oh my, that's sad. I feel like this place would be so packed. Jeez. It just stinks because a lot of these businesses did not make it out of the pandemic in 2020 and 2021. Very, very sad. Yeah, everything is closed up here. It's very unfortunate. All of these restaurants and establishments are no longer in existence. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't know what to say. After thinking in my head just now, after I finished that last clip, I guess my big hope for this area here on International Drive Point Orlando is maybe the city or the state will pipe in some money and they will open things back up here because this area is huge for tourism and it just hurts seeing this place this empty. Again, I know it's during the day. I feel like the only time this place is somewhat busy is on Friday night and Saturdays, maybe holidays. I just remember walking up in this area and all of these restaurants would have outdoor seating with like live entertainment, live bands, and everybody would be getting their drink and eat on. And today, nothing. At least the sun is starting to come out now. It does look like the comedy club is safe and that's good. However, 
It's not open right now because they are currently undergoing a remodel at the moment. Across from the comedy club, there's a new spot called Earth Illuminated. I don't know what this is. Escape reality, discover creation, and a whole new light. As of this recording, which is in the middle of April 2023, there's only four establishments that are open here on the second level. Well, three until the comedy club reopens. You have the Mediterranean spot backed by BB Kings, and then you have this Earth Illuminated, which hasn't opened just yet, and then the movie theater, and then, like I said, the comedy club when it reopens. Ah, man, this is crazy to see with my own eyes. But let's head back down to the first level, see what's still open down here, and then hop back in the car and head over to Icon Park. There's a few stores down here, but none of them really look open <laughs> at all. I'm back down by the parking garage, and then you have International Drive right behind me. There's a new restaurant. This is a Brazilian steakhouse. It looks like it hasn't opened just yet. I could be wrong, but it's right across from my favorite Italian spot, Maggiano's. Here's a big helpful tip for some of you who are visiting without your own car. If you would like to visit Busch Gardens in Tampa, which is about an hour and 15 minutes away from International Drive, if you purchase a ticket through the Busch Gardens website, they offer free transportation to Busch Gardens and back daily. I think they will take you over to SeaWorld and Aquatica and Discovery Cove as well. I've never done this, but I think I need to do a video here shortly to show you guys how convenient this is. Something to keep in mind. Before I leave Point Orlando, there's the parking garage. I wanted to show you Wonderworks. It is still open. I love this facade. It's very eye-catching. This is like Ripley's Believe It or Not. I have done this before. If you want to see that video, I'll leave it down in the description as well. I found more of those rentable scooters here right outside of Wonderworks. Right next door, iFly, which is indoor skydiving. It's still open. And then next door, you can find Ice Bar Orlando. And this bar has a really neat concept to it. But I will say, being a local, I feel like the drinks are very overpriced. It's more like a tourist trap to me. And then you have a fee to just enter the building. But I mean, it's still cool. It's here. If you need something to do, come check it out. I'm back in the car, heading north on International Drive. My next destination on today's adventure brings me here to Icon Park. And here I am, right in front of the Orlando Star Flyer. I have done this many, many times but <laughs> I will not be doing it today because of everything that has recently been going on here at Icon Park with the attractions and such. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when I get closer. By the way, parking is always free here at Icon Park. Looks like they are currently running a wheel deal for $24.99. You get your own private capsule experience. You have an Outback Steakhouse here. This Sloppy Joe's restaurant just opened. This is a Key West bar and grill. Ooh, there's fresh coconuts down here. There's a Shake Shack. There's also a Buffalo Wild Wings right next to one of my favorite restaurants down here yard house and then you have tin roof another good restaurant down here and then you have gordon ramsay's fish and chips and then sugar factory down there as well they offer a train for the little ones i noticed this sign as i was walking by the icon park sip and saver i'm glad more places are starting to do these events it's april 30th from 12 to 5 p.m and you can try different food items and drinks from these restaurants down here. I may have to come back and check this out. It does look like business is usual here at Icon Park. A lot of people are still coming here to visit this place. I mean, there's still a ton to do here other than riding, you know, the smaller attractions around this area. You can find Uncle Julio's down here, which is a very delicious Mexican restaurant. This looks delicious. They have a acai experience down here somewhere. Blake Sheldon's Old Red restaurant is still open here at Icon Park. Live music daily, no cover charge. And then you have Brother Jimmy's Barbecue, which is a newer restaurant down here. Kids eat free, ages 10 and under, per adult entree. I wanted to show you that the drop tower has been completely taken down and demolished because there was a horrific accident that happened here. I'm not going to go into detail, but 
you want more information or if you just haven't heard, just do a quick Google search and you'll find out what you need to find out. And then the slingshot is still up. I don't know if it's in operation. I thought this could have been demolished as well, but it still stands. And then no more drop tower at all. Looks like they have added some new attractions here on the right side of the wheel. This one is called Museum of Illusions Orlando. I've never been inside. And then down here they have added the extreme virtual reality experience. Let's quickly make a stop inside the Woolhouse Market to see what's new or what's changed. Oh, it's nice in here. They have added this bar where you can purchase your tickets. And then right there you have the 7D dark ride experience. And then you have a few places to grab some food from. And then over here you have Sea Life. Right next to the 7D Dark Ride Experience, you have the Will Entrance. Again, I'm not going to do this today. I would like to do it here soon because I want to see what Epic Universe is looking like from up top. And then they have added this arcade, which is nice because I always enjoy a nice arcade every now and then. And then over here you have Madame Tussauds. Hello there, Marilyn Monroe. Here's a quick look at the pricing, if you were interested. You can find a fuel rod station here, and I love these because they have them at Universal and Disney and most airports. And then you can find a ATM as well. Ooh, I'm back outside, and I can smell the scent of fish and chips from the Gordon Ramsay fish and chips restaurant right there. And then, like I said, you have the sugar factory right here on the corner and it looks like they are still offering the Play Pass, which is a really good deal if you're coming here for the entire day with your family. They have a currency exchange booth here, which is nice. All right, I am now making my way back to the car. I'm going to continue today's adventure going down International Drive. I believe our next stop is International Drive in Sand Lake, where the world's largest McDonald's is. You have the Hulk Hogan's Beach store over there as well the Titanic experience, and then Disney opened up a new Disney store in that area. So let's head that way now. Since I'm already over here in the area, I wanted to stop real quick and show you Ripley's, believe it or not, it's still here, still open, still going. They have also added this Ripley's Mirror Maze store. There's the Orlando Star Flyer going to the top, and then we can still see the wheel. I did park my car here in this parking lot right outside of Chewy's which is one of my favorite Mexican restaurants of all time. There's Mango's, it's still open. And then you have the newest Disney store right there. I've been inside sometime last year. It's just, you know, your standard Disney World gift shop with a little bit of everything inside. And there's the world's largest McDonald's. I have done a full video from there. I'll also be sure to leave that video down in the description as well. Here's Sand Lake, and then we can see some of the Universal Orlando hotels, like that's Aventura and the Cabana Bay Tower. And then we can see the top of Volcano Bay right there. There's Hogan's Beach Shop. And that's pretty much it. If you continue going down in this direction on Sand Lake, that will lead you to the backside of Epic Universe. There's a Starbucks, a UPS store, and a Walgreens. I do like this Disney display on top of this building here letting people know, hey, there's a Disney store right here off I-4. It has been a long time since I've last been inside Hogan's Beach Shop. Let's go check it out real quick. They have added a wrestling ring here in the middle of the store. There's a ton of Hulk Hogan merchandise. There's the Nature Boys robe, a bunch of Hulkamania t-shirts and tank tops and action figures. There's his NWO motorcycle. What you gonna do, brother? He has signed belts here inside of the store and all of the titles. There's the Hollywood Hogan title. Wow. They have the Universal titles, the Ultimate Warrior title. A ton of stuff has been signed by Hulk Hogan himself. There's a arena chair. That's nice. I just found out you can pay $20 and you can pick one of those titles that I just showed you and you can step inside of this ring and take photos. Okay, I'm still on International Drive, but now I'm on the other side of Sand Lake right next to the Endless Summer Resorts at Universal Orlando. Oh yes, I remember this gift shop. Now this reminds me of the good old International Drive 
just because how vintage and weird and wacky this store looks. And then right next door is the new Roboland. I've heard pretty good things about this experience. I'll have to come back and check it out. I always tell you guys, stay away from these ticket booths because they're not real tickets. And a lot of people who purchase these tickets have a lot of issues when trying to enter the theme parks because these are <laughs> discounted tickets up to 50% off. Just go to the actual theme parks website to purchase your tickets. Oh, you can rent electric bikes as well. I love this ice cream from Mr. Cool because they have that rolled up ice cream. It's very, very tasty. And then you can find boba tea, milk tea, smoothies, and milkshakes here as well. That's what the spot looks like. Gator Golf is still here. You can mini golf. And then they have real gators here. Whoa. I'm always so terrified of alligators. I don't know why. The slingshot is still open in operation here. And then across the street, you can find the Titanic experience. I love that experience. It was so much fun. They also have a dinner experience that you can do as well. If you're into that kind of stuff, definitely check it out on your next trip. I'm now coming up on the two Universal Value resorts, In the Summer, Dockside, and Surfside. Here on your right, there's In the Summer, Dockside, and Surfside. Very close to everything on this side of Sand Lake. I'm now here in front of Desertland. I have never been inside, and if you did not know, this used to be the Artigon Mall, I believe, and the next door, this was a Bass Pro Shop, but I don't think it's no longer a Bass Pro Shop. I think it's just an outdoor store. There's a gift shop, and then you have a lounge that just opened Legends right here. I'm gonna quickly go inside, have a quick walk around, just to say I've been inside of Desertland. Wow, this has changed, let me tell you. They have go-karts, they have a Orlando Auto Museum over there bowling, an arcade, a few places to grab food. Interesting. They have axe throwing, pinball palace, and then the Cinemark is still open, I think. What's up, Doc? I like this Bugs Bunny car. They have a few retro vehicles in here. There's the mystery machine. These go-karts look like fun. They have a James Bond bar here. That's cool. There's the arcade over there, and then they have a place where you can bowl and order food. Yeah, this is not Bass Pro anymore. They don't even have this entrance available anymore. They have it completely blocked off. I found the axe throwing place. That's always a fun time. Good news, the Cinemark is still open. I found the Pinball Palace. This room is full of different pinball games. Dang, this looks awesome. I'm definitely going to have to come back and maybe make a family day out of Desertland. Got some pool tables, some games over there, and then a bar. Milk, the house of cereal. What the heck is this? It's like a cereal bar. That's what I heard. Right next door, they have a rage room. Well, I have some unfortunate news. My camera just died. I guess I was filming a lot today. I think that's my sign to go ahead and call it a day. Toe Mater. You look a little different here. <laughs> Hope all is well. <laughs> and then I wanted to show you real quick how close we are to the Orlando Premium Outlet Mall, which is right there past those trees. You could walk there in like three to five minutes. That's how close we are. You just cross the street, there's a sidewalk, and then you have a few other small outlet stores like there's another Nike outlet store right there. They also built a few hotels. There's a few restaurants. There's a McDonald's, a Starbucks, a Taco Bell right over there. And then also, if you continue driving, maybe like five more minutes down this direction and then you're gonna turn left, that will actually take you right to Mall at Millennia, which is a fancy high-end mall. All right, my friends, I'm going to go ahead and call it a day here from International Drive Orlando. I really enjoyed today. I'm glad I took the time to come here on iDrive and see what's exactly going on, see what's still available, what's still in operation, what's new, what's closed. It was different, a lot has changed. Like I said at the beginning, I feel like iDrive is starting to go downhill, but you know, Desertland is still doing good, Icon Park is doing good. I hope the point at Orlando will do better over time. And you know, I think iDrive just needs a few more 
big draws to this area. I got to start on the other end by the Orange County Convention Center. From there, we made our way to the Point Orlando, went to Icon Park, went to the Sand Lake area, and then finished up here at Desertland, right by the Outlet Mall. It was a fun day. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you have any memories of International Drive Orlando, leave me a comment down below and let me know. I would love to hear some of your memories. And also down below, let me know if you still take the time to visit International Drive when you're here on vacation. And what do you enjoy doing here on iDrive? Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up as it really does help up the channel in so many different ways. I love you all so much. Please remember, it's nice to be nice in YouTube. I'll see you in the next video. Prince Charming.